in the Sam Ass factory and I'm going to show you how these mowers and these mergers are made today. An idiot abroad. <laughs> that is where we are on our way to the Sam Ass factory. That's very, very random our turbo balloon up in the morning, I think. Look at the size of that nest. Army. Big stalks. Looks a bit wet here as well. Didn't have it recorded, but I just did a 1594 on a Merlot that side of the road. There's two stalks on a nest, and then that's where we're going. That big factory behind them trees. We just arrived now at the factory, and this is what I've come to see. So hopefully one of these will turn rows of straw over just completely sort of like so imagine that's the row of straw and it's, it's dry on the bottom you go along and it'll just flick it over like that and put the wet to the top and the dry to the bottom so it's tines driven by hydraulic motor is it hydraulic motor somewhere is it hydraulic yeah, motor right, this one's PTO driven well there's hydraulic motor there so it runs in the PTO but you can have it just hydraulic so you plug it into your tractor this is for like the small yeah. yeah just just literally just inverts the row it's perfect isn't it, it, runs around at quite speed as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah yeah well you want to so you can go quick don't you yeah. and that's a deflector to stop it flying too far I don't come with the kit, by the way. Oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't just, yeah, I don't just sit here and like turn. <laughs> yeah. sit on the Before we go inside, we're going to have a little mooch. What else is here? That's a one, two, three, four. Eight rotor, is it? Eight rotor tether. Folds up neat, that, doesn't it? I don't know, it does look quite wide. <laughs> That's for a hitch like we've got for the uh, new fert spreader. Go and stand next to it for scale, Joe. Where about? <laughs> it's huge, isn't it? Yeah. 14 hectare site and he's eight years old. When he grew out, outgrew the other factory in the town, they built this one out here. It's even got some, well, you can't really see, but that's back of some solar panels. It's said still, isn't it? Yeah, real still. No wind. These, these are mint. I love block paving. Even mark the bays out with it as well. <laughs> Look at the timeline. So the first thing they built was potato harvester, but then realised that not many was a bigger market in grassland equipment. So it went into mowers, 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 mowers. mowers. And then bigger mowers, hedge cutters, and right up to now we like the mergers as well. It's like pulled two rows together. Even got the flag out for us. Snow plows. Snow plows mergers. Rakes. <laughs> yeah, so um, building C is the uh, R&D block, so that's where we come up the with special the projects. Special projects <laughs> and new ideas. So we're all ready now to go down the mine shaft. Pretty big. I think it's actually dinner time though. Or brew time. Everyone was going the other way looking hungry. Hey guys, this is so I think we should go. I think we This is basically a robot with magnets on. Collecting steel and stacking it on pallets. After it's come out of a laser cutter. Let's see it now, hold on. There you go. That's one of the laser cutters in there, cutting that steel out. 
and then it must roll out. And then that thing then picks it up. So that one, um, the piece of steel has moved, so it can't, it's struggling to pick the bits up, so someone's got to manually shunt it, but they're on the T-brake. Um, so I thought I'd show you this one, but that one's just stopped. I think it must have loaded its pallet up, which is a shame. This, this laser cutter in here is cutting now. The flat sheet of steel goes in and then cuts all the parts out. It's fast that, isn't it? That's the thickness of the steel it cuts. Look how smooth that is though. Yeah, just perfect. So, it's heavy that, it must be good steel. <laughs> That's the problem, can you see how the sheet's moved and it's not, can't quite pick the piece up out the middle? So you can either prod it with this bar or open that door, but if you open that door it automatically turns the machine off in case it sort of flew around and hit you. So it's just waiting now for someone to come and sort it out. But these two laser cutters are four times faster than the previous laser cutters they had. And at a weekend, it can run pretty much 24-7 with just one guy keeping an eye on him in case something moves like that's done. But it, they automatically get it from the steel rack, which is that whole shed, cut to whatever it needs, stack it on pallets, and then you just take the pallets away. And um, it just makes all the parts for the, to be welded together. That is a PTO shaft tubing that's, I don't know, must be... Six, no, is it six or four? They, they're not 20 foot base, 40 foot long nearly. Oh yeah, doesn't go all the way. Eight, eight meters. meters. I'll, I'll count it, hold on. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten meter PTO tubes. They're pretty cool, them pictures. Like massive stretched uh, vinyl canvas right into the factory. Yeah, that racking at the back is pretty much like your paper tray on your printer. So it just kind of like, whatever it needs, a little cart goes along and pulls it out like a drawer and loads it on and then puts it ready for the laser cutter. And there's all sorts of other various parts over there. When the racking is low on steel, these little carts on rails, little train carriages, come out in and they load it with the forklift and equally unload the off cuts as well. So that's had loads of parts cut out of it. That's the scale of the steel rack. Madness. What we have here is a big bender, don't mean Joe. It's uh, for rolling these tubes. Which is to make the, the A-frames of the tethers. You put it in and then it like turns and the roller lowers down. There's a huge one that like twists it as well. This is a flexible rod. It's hard to believe. And they slide that in the tubes before they bend them in this big tube bender. And that means that it doesn't collapse the inner wall. So that's flexible and pulls back out after they've bent it. Doesn't look like though, it just looks like a massive piece of normal steel to me. But it's flexible normal steel. It's massive that though, isn't it? Like, like a train wheel. That is what they use to put the rear sort of axle, uh, wheel assemblies on the mergers, I think. Or mowers. We'll have a look if we can find one in the, in the yard outside. But by using a big long piece of bent tube, it's cheaper to make and stronger than if they had to use box section with welding and angles. This is a 4D profiler, so it's taking in lengths of steel and it's cutting it to what you need and then drilling holes in it and you can even tap it as well. It's got like a multiple head on it. Yeah, it winds the piece of steel in and then it'll drill it and tap it. And you've got all the different taps there and it automatically will grab what tool it needs onto the head that's doing the work. There we go, so it's cutting the end off. 
Plus runs holes in it. How mad's that it can actually line them up with the ones it drilled in the top. And then now it'll cut the end off to the right length. Then catches it in that little basket below. Woo. So it plasmed that hole and flipped it over and plasmed that one and they line up. Perfect. Grab another one. It's behind a fence, you see, so that you don't get whacked by it. Put it in the press, moves out of the way. Press presses it, picks it back up, stacks it in the pallet. This guy here is making these bits that are quite flat into these bits with a bit of a kink. I'll show you how in a second. So he lines them up on the jig, stamps some of his feet. And uh, got a little pedal down there. And it just comes down enough to put a kink in them to make them like that. So that's state of the art. And then that's 1965, 500 ton press. Pressing out parts as well. This is cool, you get a flat piece of steel like that. Stick it in the press. And then you press that green button now. 500 ton. Effortless. And you end up with one of them. You think the lights would go dim, wouldn't you, when it pushes on it? That is crazy when you think what it does to it. Well, watch it again because it's cool. There's a quiz question, what's that? It's a flat. Oh, you've given it away. <laughs> this is like the machining shop, so it's full of lathes where they're making drive rollers and things for the conveyor belts. These are mower beds that have been welded together, bottom and the top, and then the holes are all there that were plasmed out. Then it goes into that machine there, clamps it down, it measures everything and then it mills them to exactly the right size. So it basically, when it's lasered, it's made slightly smaller so then they can get the precision then through a milling machine rather than a laser, ready for putting all those cogs in. And at some point in the factory then, they dip it in water and pump air into it to check that it's sealed so that no oil's gonna leak out of it. So if it's airtight, it's obviously oil tight. Just add the probe. So that's got a probe on now to measure and then it can yeah. flick to a milling head just as fast as it just change then. So it's measuring how much it needs to mill out. It's a big rubber twisty spiral for a conditioner. These are some conditioner, that's what we saw getting bent before. Then for the mower conditioners that spin, different rotors for them. This spins the rotors up to balance them to make sure that they're gonna not wobble or vibrate once all the uh, flails or teeth are bolted on. Guys putting thread lock on all of them. So you've seen it as a flat piece, then you saw it getting bent. Now it's welded together and painted. And now it's getting bolted to a rotor. So that 
you can see this one for example that's welded that's there the little balancing mass. weights to keep but it this one it's a little bit bigger uh, right no depending way. On the, on i don't think part. you'd have to balance them so this is after hardening you can see that yeah yeah the heat the treated so that was pressed out then they welded the lugs on the top and then, then it went goes hardening then they put it on that which is basically like a brake um a wheel balancer and they'll weld little lumps of steel on to balance them perfectly never knew that and this guy's balancing the top hats them things they're the end one aren't they oh yeah see So that spins it and then on the computer there it'll tell them whether it's in balance or out of balance they're just welding on one of them tabs now to balance it and i presume they'll spin it up again and test it so it's spinning it up now and pretty good this is what we need in our workshop it's like a carousel with racks on and they put all the tooling in there so it's like four meters i think by three meters but like loads of different shelves so it just puts it's like a massive automated toolbox so they load stuff into it keep it out the way for when they're not using that bit of tooling save having a bigger area this is a pinion shaft out the mower and then that machine's going to measure the hardness of it by basically poking it this little thing's just going to puncture it So apparently it's 29 Rockwell HRC hard, whatever that means. Yeah. This is measuring every every bearing hub to check that it's the right size and the right tolerance. So like the X and the Y axis. Sorry, how fast did you say that spins? Uh, I mean, depending on the gearbox, but the average speed is around 3,000. 100, 300, 3,200 RPM. And that's the shaft they just tested the hardness. Correct. And every single shaft you every test. Every single shaft. Because, because at 3,200 it can fly off. Now oh, that's a welding table, isn't it? <laughs> Massive. Well, you can see with the robot working behind yeah, there. So that's why we've got this gate here. Yeah. So it doesn't stop the whole process because once, uh, once the welding process is done on one side, yeah. then the removal or loading of, of oh, the I see, yeah. So it, we it welds side that side, and then you get this one ready, yeah. and it flicks and over. Once, once the welding is done on that side, once the part cools down, it can. Yeah, yeah. You know, so will he set them up in the right place and tack them on, and then yeah. the robot you've flips got, over and welds them properly? Arms. You've got two arms, one arm each is. Oh, one holds it and then the other one welds it? The other one welds it around. Ah, right, yeah, yeah. So these are rotor shafts out of a mower. See if we can see through here. See, one arm is holding it. Yeah. The other one, the other one is welding. From one side and from the other side because in the middle there is no weld. Yeah, yeah. For the flail to move. Yeah. That's what it's welding basically. One arm holds it and then the other one welds it. And then it's on a rotating bench so they can turn it as it goes along. So these are the lugs and then he's loading the, like a sledge that will automatically fit the robot grabs either end of. So you put a hole one side and a square the other. That squares the other side round. Yeah, so he just keeps pushing them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, a yeah square head. Another robot welding. There's some of them bent tubes. These things are all strung up, ready to go and get cleaned for painting. Once it disappears in there, that's where it gets shot blasted. I don't know whether we'll see it properly, will we? Yeah, that's like a shot blasting chamber. Yeah, so when it's all welded and made, it's either dead smooth or got a bit of surface rust. So then it goes in the shot blaster, comes out like that, really shiny, but also 
kind of like elephant skinny ready to like sandpaper so that the paint keys to it it's like decorating a christmas tree hangs everything on puts it in there then it gets shot blasted i reckon he's got the worst job because he's basically decorating a christmas tree every day there is something in it <laughs> after it's shot blasted they clean it with air guns make sure there's no blast left inside stuff and welds cleaning the and, welds. and welds but not right yeah they blow it down with air lines and chip it with a hammer so they call them the woodpeckers these are all the tanks that everything gets rinsed into there's one two three four five six seven and then at the very end down here it starts to get a coating on it the they're cleaning this is actually electro forensic deposition epd epd which is basically paint and then it goes in the oven behind and what is important that this E coat, it's just the base coat. Yeah. Right on top of the base coat, we've got the uh, we've got Put the, the color. We've got the color, which is the top coat, top coating, and that's why we can change the color easily because we've got the base coat primer part primed at the beginning, right? Yeah. And then we can uh, we can add any color you want. Comes out the furnace on them tracks, goes over there. So that's that's been primed, and you can feel the heat coming off it because it's just come out the furnace. So these fans are cooling it down before it heads off into there to get, I think it's colour added. They add the powder coat to it, the, well the robot does, then they touch it up with the handguns if anything's missed, and it goes across into another furnace for an hour, and then that creates the top coat then. So this now is the final finish all cooled down buy some more fans so now all the parts have been made and painted they're all assembled over here so there's a there's some rake assemblies there's a flail mower has it been built there or is it no it's a merger I think there's a rake here getting built that's a chassis and then this one has started to have the rotors added. There's the bogies ready to go underneath that one with a carousel on the top that makes the rake spin. This is this is a merger, so basically picks it up on like a pickup reel on a baler, throws it on the conveyor belts, then they throw it to the middle. Then they end up with a row of hail straw out the back. All right, so the new green's going to be a slight bit darker. So these are two frames for rear mowers that fold out. So this huge valve block, all the solenoids, is for when the mower is on isobus to control everything. So it has an auto lube pump over there to reach all the pins and the pivot points. I'm guessing this one doesn't have isobus or auto lube and you set it all up presumably with these. Just show you this, so this is like the mower bed that we saw before, these are what they were pressing on the, on the bed and they now hold the mower blades on. So that's a complete mower deck and then that's it now with its framework added and it's getting ready for its skirt to be put around it. That's a, the roller conditioning unit uh, driven by belts. So that like really crimps the grass. It's you know, like a mangle, I suppose, isn't it? Remember an old mangle? Kids won't understand what a mangle is. Google it. Oh, I never. So they they mesh together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So on. Of the roller conditioner is to break the stem in a couple of places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four places. So uh, it's uh, one break here, second here, third here, and the fourth here. Yeah, so yeah. Once the stem is like that, it's just completely enough to increase the uh, dry in time. time. I would. I was saying you could do what what class do, where the, the shred lidge rollers, where one turns a bit quicker than the other and it turns it, but you'd have to have steel ones and you couldn't have it meshing together like that. That's one of them mowers mowing maize like 
seven or eight foot high. And then it's going through one of them rubber rollers. No way. <laughs> Move holes and you can't get a nut underneath. So he gets these bolts, puts them through with that jig on and then torques it up with that torque wrench and it pulls them in with the glue and the... Yeah, you can show it on the, on the, on the, first, on the first stage. Yeah, so that goes in there. Like that. And then that thing pulls it up tight. And the splines they cut in. And the, the spline, the, yeah, the splines cut, cut in. To the, to the top, to the top uh, part of the top of the there are them studs pulled in now, and then he's putting the cogs in now. Once they've bolted everything on, they drop it in that water underneath and put compressed air into it and see if it bubbles to check everything's not going to leak. Then they flip it over and put the uh, skids on the bottom. And what is, uh, what is, what is nice? Much as old beach, the more old beach, so yet no? So that's the bed, then they put one of them on it, and then they put a wear plate on, so it's like triple layered. Yes. And then this is easy because this wears faster yeah. than it, and it's cheaper to replace. So more customer friendly, because they say, uh, this one is definitely cheaper than the welded. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in place of the, of the regular wear, wear plate, we can have topping skids to cut higher. Right, yeah. To cut higher, you can use the topping skids. Topping skids. Yeah, yeah. Which is the quick release blade and see how it's got like a dog leg there that stops them falling off so you put a tool in and surprise that bar which then will lift up and then you can unhook the blade there's some blades here that we can see let's have a look there you go there's the blades so they hook oh is it gone oh it's there the top out there you go so they they go on there you see like that Yeah. Ta da! So that's a drive line for the front bed. PTO goes in there, drives straight down into the disc mower, and then also you've got the speeds there for the rear conditioner with no belts. The finished article front mower in the showroom. And then you've got the, the rear mowers with the belts on the back to convey it to the middle. And then you've got this merger here, which is basically two pickup reels and the belts that push a row together. I think it's nine meters that. And then Joe's just found this light that detaches for when you're changing the blades. Ah, so you just leave that on and you can see underneath. That's good, isn't it? So that's how they're all made. So it's the 40 year anniversary and a two year warranty as well. Didn't know that. Blades. So spur blades, that clicks in there and then you just unclip it and take it with you to when you change them. <laughs> and that's the blade changing tool. Yep. Just realise, so that is a, like nine metres, so it'll pull a row to the middle, but also you can run the belts that way. So like one throwing that way, one throwing that way. So when you go up and down the field, you can make clear nine metres to the left and then go down the other side. And then you can end up with then like an 18 or a 19 metre row just by going up and down. Rather than, so you can double the size of the row, which is something you can't do with a rake. Just having a quick mooch around the parts depot, call them shafts. So if you break your conditioner, you've got them on the shelf. And if you break your frames, they have even got them. So this is a massive crate of tines heading to probably Australia. And if the wood's over six mil, it has to be heat treated so that there's no like worms or anything living in it. Or it needs, or it, uh, it needs to be plywood, which has already been heat treated. Yeah, yeah. So they have to make but bare special wood, crates. Bare, bare wood, it needs to be heat treated, it needs to have a stamp. So the envi uh, environmental services in America, for example, they know it's uh, been done. Knows that this, uh, this has been heat treated and there's no warming uh, in yeah, the inside yeah. wood. Yeah, another one getting right made there. There's a cross section of what they've been making and how the gearing works. Leaving the Samas factory now, Jake's gutted. We wanted to stay. 
Um, we're going to go off to a farm. <laughs> Joe's laughing because he knows why I've said that. Um, we're just going off now to visit a farm. So, but you'll probably see this tomorrow anyway, because the farm tomorrow, because the video's got too long. So, thanks for watching, and there's the birthdays. <laughs> Me and Joe are sat in the back, reclined on our way to the farm. So, yeah, Ian has done the birthdays, and someone's put a funny name on it. So, uh, you see if you can spot it. Also, uh, we looked all around the machinery in the backyard. There's loads of it, so you'll see that again tomorrow. Sun update. It's up there somewhere. Ash Darby is 34, Alan Brabazon is 57, Emma Moorland is 26, Willie McLaren is the big 7-0, Kevin Thorne is the almost big 6-0, uh, Karen from Gale Talk, Andrew, Mark Phil, and last but not least, Ivor Biggin. Wait, <laughs> that's just cost you a fiver. £63,699 raised, and if you want to be on there, there's a link under every video.